Shalom. Yes, back at you with another video. So, it's one of my favorite old school Jack and Nori stories. So, we're going to see if we can get anything out of this old school Jack and Nori st story. You know, but before I go into it, I want to give all praises to you. How about Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Raka, Kwadash, annotations to all the Akim. The Afwakim and the Wafbanyam, that's the elect men, women, and children that are obedient to the order. And Kwam Yashu'ala to the house of Israel. Kwam Yashu'ala to the house of David. So, this is an old Jack and Ori story the turtoise and the hare. And um, there's many old Jack and Ori stories that, if we can remember us for <laughs> back at our school days, that were told to us. And I can remember this one in particular. Uh, the tortoise and the hare. Goldilocks. That's another one. Goldilocks. And the three, three bears. And the three little pigs. And um, what was another one? There's, there's many of them. Um, Snow White and the seven dwarves. So they actually, um, they were old Jack and Ori stories that were told to us when we were young. Uh, some of us may remember them and they had morals to them and this one in particular is a suitable one for this video because I'm going to title the video uh, he that endures to the end is the one that shall be saved from Matthew 24 13 so it's a spin-off from the other video I did on um, he that endure uh, the race is not for the swift but who can endure it please ask to tease um, Ecclesiastes 9-11 so this is a spin-off from that one the race is not for the swift but who can endure it so let's just well they won't let me play it they're gonna say it's some kind of copyright claim you know so old so I don't know how they can say that but I remember this um, this story that was told to us and we see the hair on the right here <laughs> and this is the turtoise so, you know, we know the race, the hare was confident in his ability, rightfully so. The hares are known for their speed, you know, and their cleverness when, they, when it comes to hunting. And the tortoise is known for his slow, monotonous, deliberate, slow movements, the tortoise. Um, but we know the outcome of this race the hare became so he was so confident with his ability he started to have fun along the way eat, sit down and eat a carrot then just before the end of the race he started he fell down he, he, he lied down and he fell asleep just before the end of the race and the tortoise you know we know the end of it the tortoise beat him the turtoise beat him just at the end of the race we see the hare there you know, having his fun. He was actually playing a game of tennis. You know, a two two man game of tennis. He was playing it on his own. He was that quick. And just before the end, you know, he was having fun along the way. See there, he's having his fun. You know, doing his recreation. Yeah. And just before the end of the race, see there's the slow to tortoise. And then just before the end of the race, here's the finish line. He says, oh, he just remembered he's in a race. And what happened was, his ass got beat. Yeah? He fell flat on his face, man. Right there, there's the turtles beating him. And the, and the hair. You can get it there. He fell flat on his face, man. There you go. Just before the end of the race. He fell flat on his face. So that's the moral of the story. So what was it? What was the? We know the turtoise is um he's, he has many issues, you know, with his um slowness, snow maneuvers, everything he does is slow, and the and the the total contrast to each other. So the moral of the story was the hair was became complacent. You know, he started to become complacent. So I'm relating this to today's video. And we're going to look up the word complacence. Complacency. Complacent. It says showing smug or 
uncritical satisfaction with oneself or one's achievements smug smug self-satisfied i'll just look at this one you can you can't afford to be complacent about security yeah and i remember years ago there was a lot of bank robberies and it was down to security um a complacency towards com towards towards the security so what they did they realized they needed to beef up their security because and that's when their cctv with cctv was introduced because many people found ways a lot of them were inside jobs as well when it comes to the bank robberies but um they caught on they realized they need to needed to beef up their security and they introduced us, um, the cctvs and as you can see today they're all over the place and that cut down crime dramatically but it was because of the complacent attitude towards security that's why they beefed up the uh, security so that was part of complacency and also smug it says the synonym there smug self-satisfied pleased with oneself proud of one's own achievements self-approval self self-admiring self self-regarding gloating uh, triumphant proud pleased satisfied content contented careless slack lazy uh lax laxy daisy cool or lazy uh that's so that's the synonyms of complacency and that it sums up what happened in this race the here with all his abilities and all his confidence he became complacent because there's nothing wrong with having those abilities and those the speed speed of mind speed of thought and um confidence in their right places they're all right but he, he came up against some some situations where he's really he was he wasn't even if you really think about it he wasn't beaten by the turtles he was beaten by himself because it was, it was his own self that beat him uh, self-confidence or complacency and the tortoise was just doing what turtles usually do. Just, just they just do. They just plod, plod along. So if I had a choice between the the tortoise and the hare, to be quite honest, I think it would be um, a choice between. I would I wouldn't choose neither one, <laughs> because um, I would choose balance. I would choose in between, not too complacent, not too quick. Not too overconfident, or even not too slow like the tortoise himself. So, because the tortoise was a little bit too slow, so to get the balance, we wouldn't choose either one of these characteristics. But there's a reason why I'm using that because there's a moral to the story. That is where the children of Israel went wrong. They became complacent, and the idea came to me after I read this in Psalms. 78 that's where the idea came to me actually all of the verses in psalm 78 are good we're going to hit this point one or two points i would like to read all of it but for simplicity and time we're going to read one or two verses out of psalm 78 start from five it says four he established a testimony in jacob and appointed a law in israel which he commanded this is when the children of israel was in the in the wilderness and the most I was leading them out via Moses and very much miracles. And he says that he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Eight. And might not be as their fathers, jump down to yeah, jump down to eight, as and not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright. And whose spirit was not steadfast with God. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his laws. So he, he, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as a heap. In the daytime also he led them with the cloud all the night with a light of fire. Uh, a cloud all the night with a light of fire yeah that, so that's the chariot that's the that's the chariots there was a company uh, along with chariots 
So he's, he's displaying everything that he was doing for the children of Israel, leading them out of the wilderness. 15. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink out of the great depths. He brought them also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. So they was tempted by lusts. You know, really is a lack of appreciation what he's saying there. Ye they spoke against, they spake against God. They said, can God finish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters dashed out, gashed out. And the streams of overflow, can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? And all these things, that, that's what the Most High did do. 21. Therefore the Lord had this and was rough. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. So that's the point. It was really showing that lack of appreciation, you know, they became complacent. 23 to end it off. Though he had commanded the cloud from above and opened the doors of heaven and he rained down manna upon them to eat. This is the point. And had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels food and sent them meat to full. So there was, there was a, you know, they actually got food from heaven and it was described as manna or angel food. And I was curious about that. And I checked that out. The angel food in where it talks about in Numbers. In Numbers, we want Numbers 14. When you think about the food we're getting today, you know, this defiled food as it describes in Ezekiel 4.12, we're eating defiled food. The children of Israel had something, you know, far superior to what we're getting today but they rejected it right we look a little bit uh this is the precept to the one we just looked at in numbers we just looked at in numbers 14 and we won't read 12 it says i will smite them with the pestilence hold on is that the one we want 11 Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. 11, 7. Talking about the angel food. I wanted to see what it was about, you know. Food from, from heaven. When you compare the nasty food we're getting today, this, you know, this defiled food, it says in 7, it says, And the manna was a as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of... That word is so lucky, I can't pronounce that word there. The color of Dorlium, and the people went about and gathered it, and the ground it in mills, and, and and the ground it in mills, or beat it in the moot in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it, and the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. So that's what I, that's what I wanted, you know. They had fresh food, man. You know, something that we don't get today. So. They showed a lack of appreciation, man. You know, food from heaven, fresh food from he from heaven, and it, it goes into it a little bit more in Numbers eleven, uh, from the from from seven, describes a little bit more how they were supposed to gather it, and how they were supposed to eat it, and not and not leave any left over. But they, you know, they showed how their attitude was ungrateful. Let's go back to Psalm seventy eight, twenty five. It says, yeah. So man did the angel food. He sent them meat to the full. And this is their attitude. After getting everything led through the wilderness by the chariots, the so-called UFOs today, accompanied by the chariot directly. And the man at the food from heaven and being, being led through the, uh, the Red Sea. You know, I had them also. I let them open the sea for them and um, drown the Egyptians. This is their attitude after all of that. 
you know right this is the attitude in 56 it says yet they tempted and provoked the most high god and kept not his testimony 58 for they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images when god heard this he was rough and greatly abhorred israel you know so that he forsook the tabernacle of shiloh and the tent which he placed among them and delivered his strength unto captivity and his glory unto the enemy's hand he gave his people over also unto the sword and was rough with his inheritance so he was angry with the children of israel man in the wilderness this is the last one and the fire consumed their young men and their maidens were not given to marriage yes so that's the result of the children of israel's complacency and lack of appreciation you know and so the point is that they fell right just before they was going to, about to get into the promised line you know promised land they showed their lack of faith their lack of appreciation and they became complacent and this is what uh, the most I was saying to Yehosha, uh, to Moses at that time. Um, in Numbers 14, this is what the most I was saying to Moses. He says, and tw from in verses 12, he says, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make of thee a greater nation. And mightier than they, he wanted to he wanted to do away with them. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in the might from among them, and they will tell it is to the inhabitants. So Moses was saying, After what you've done for them, you're going to deal away with them. He was pleading on behalf of the, the children of Israel, man, and they fell. And they will tell in, in 14 and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land for they have heard that thou Lord art among this people that thou Lord art seen face to face right and that they the, and that thy cloud standeth over them and that that's the chariots that's the so-called UFOs and that thou goest before them by day time in a pillar of a cloud and in the pillar of the fire by night right yeah this this sums it up now 15 it says now if thou shalt kill all these people as one man then the nations which have heard of the fame of thee will speak saying because the lord was not able to bring this people unto the land which he swore unto them therefore he have slain them in the wilderness Right, so the Mo, you know, he softened the Most High's face, you know, because the Most High was about glory, you know. If he was to kill them off, how would your name be magnified there among the other nations, man? So the Most High, you know, he took heed and he spared them, you know, up to the point where he let them carry on because they were so wicked and complacent. He said, you know, once again, he said, I'm going to let them all die off in the wilderness. And it was only um, the, the two, Joshua and Caleb. And all the ones that was older than 20, you know, died, died off wandering around in the wilderness. And that was because of their complacency, you see. So, yeah, I'm talking to myself, you know, and for all those uh, it may concern, you know. The race is not for the swift, but who can endure it? Many, many didn't endure it, man, in, the, in those times in the wilderness. Many fell right before the time when they were supposed to enter. They showed a lack of faith. You know, when they were supposed to go and spy at the land, they said, oh, these men are giants, you know. And they were trying to send bad reports. So they fell to idol worship, you know, as it says there in Psalms 78. Uh, lack of appreciation for the food they was getting. And they saw all those miracles directly, you know, face to face. So the most I was dealing with them directly. But they still became complacent so that's why i entitled this video you know he that endures to the end is the one that will be saved and that is the case many are called yeah many are called but few are chosen lord willing you know like i like to think that if i was there because we know that all those rebellious um 
as it mentions in Psalms, you know, they were, they were rebellious and uh, they didn't take heed to their forefathers. So all the rebellious ones are back here today. So the rebellious children of Israel are back here today. So, but the Most High is giving us a blueprint, you know. They showed a lack of faith, a lack of um, appreciation, and they fell by the, by in the end they fell, and they didn't show no confidence in their leader Moses. So there's a good lesson and there's a good moral to the story in this, you know, one of those um, old Jack and Ori stories. So we're in a race today. We're in a race today. And look at the beginning of the race. You know, he's making mockery. The, the, the rabbit is making mockery because he's in his, you know, when you see the hole, um, when it runs, you know, which they won't let me play it. He was actually making mockery all the way through the race. He was making mockery. The rabbit was making mockery of the tortoise because he didn't believe for one minute that he was going to get beat. But because of his own overconfidence and complacency, he, he fell asleep right at the end. So he didn't he didn't win the he didn't win the race, which it was in his ability to win. But he lost. So that's the moral of the story. Complacency. And when you hear some of the stories that the apostles talk about, a lot of the former members of um, One West, they they fell to that. They fell themselves towards the end. Well, they started off all right, as 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 we hear the stories from apostles Rakar and Apostle Taha and Gabar. You know, he had some um, some of those that was really really good with precepts. Uh, coordinates there was called precept coordinates and you know some of them were very good speakers but complacent set in so they didn't finish the race they fell by the wayside just like the children of Israel man just like the children of Israel so Lord willing you know through the power of the Raqqa Kodash you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that scripture too you know I'm gonna get that scripture in Matthew Matthew, many are called, Lord willing, we are called and we are chosen. I'll read from yeah, Matthew 22 14. It says, For many are called, but few are chosen. Right. So that's that's the that's the point I wanted. So if we don't fall com fall victim to complacency and we're in that number. You know, because elect have been chosen from the beginning. We're not only going to be called, but we're going to be chosen. So the last precept is just to end off the video. We're going to get Matthew again. 24, 14 says, and we're going to get 13. It says, Matthew 24, verse 13 says, But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. But he that endures to the end, unto the end, the same shall be saved. So, we're in a race today, Akim. We're in a race today. Many are called. Few are chosen. Lord willing, we are called at the moment. We have, you might say, we have the lottery tickets, and we just got to wait to go to the cashier. Lord willing, that the Most High allows us to cash them. And our inheritance is, is real and worthwhile. So that be the end of the video. I want to say, Carla, yo, Bashimi was shy. Brokataya Hawa, Brokataya was shy. Brokataya Hawa, Brokataya was shy. Carla, yo, Bashimi was shy. Shallow arm to the Akim.